afternoon, Mega Lapers! Welcome to another episode of Mega News, where we tell you something mega and call it news. And here's Joel, and she's Amanda, and we're your newscaster for today. Hey, Joel! Hey, Amanda! Do you know it's August already? <gasps> it's August? Yeah, yeah so fast. I know, right? Where have all the time went? I wonder too. Hey, but hey! Something special is happening in August. That's right, we're going to be having our We Belong e-gathering, which is happening in just two weeks' time. Aren't you excited for it? Of course I'm excited. In fact, I'm so excited that I created my very own We Belong tongue twister. Wow, and how does that go? It goes like this. <coughs> clear throat, clear throat. I belong, we belong, all my belongs and I feel belong. You know, I didn't catch a single thing you just said. You want to say okay, slower? Fine. For the sake of all the Mega Lapers down here, I will say it slower. <laughs> I belong and we belong with all my belongings where I feel belong. Wow, that is actually quite a mouthful. But you know what, Mega Lapers? I want you to challenge yourself, miss, in doing that tongue twister. And you can insta story and tag that we are mega life and we'll be featuring those stories on our story as well. And with that being said, sign ups are open today. So head over to the link behind me and sign up after service today. Yeah, and you know what's great about this conference? What? It's free! Ooh. But having said that, registration Ooh. is still compulsory. Ooh. We. If it's free, why do we still need to register? Oh, that's because it's for security purposes. So every participant who is coming to join in the conference will be given a unique password to access the session. So if you don't sign up, then you won't be getting the password. Oh, so I guess I should sign up quickly. Yeah, so you know what? You can do so right after itself and look forward to We Belong Conference. Hey guys, you are preparing? Why are you so late, what man? What time already? No, no. Uh, does it start at two thirty? It's already two thirty. And where is where's your watch? watch? Uh, it's here. Yeah. Uh, you drew it. It's actually two thirty. Eh? Yeah, it's actually two thirty, and you are late. Oh my uh, gosh, sorry, I I lost track of time because I was busy. Uh, mm -hmm, busy what? Practicing the dance. Huh? huh? What, what dance? dance? Oh, 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 is it the? Pastor Ben do that dance oh, at time. No. Whoa! No, it's, it's, it's not that dance. It's a new dance. The We Belong dance. Huh? We, we Belong, belong dance. dance. Yeah, uh, it'll be shown on the screen. Now? Oh, okay. <laughs> What's this? We Belong dance? Hey, JJ! Want dance? What? Dance? Oh, looks good, eh? Yeah, it's okay, we long dance. Oh, but I don't know how to dance, eh? It's okay, I teach you. Yeah, okay, let's, let's go. go. Ten minutes later. I can see the blood the Hey, go back. I think it'll be quite good actually. Mm. Take my phone and record that. Uh. Okay, okay. Let's go. Yeah, recording ready, yeah. Uh. Ready? Okay, yeah. Uh. Let's go. No matter what the odds may bring our way, I can see the blessings coming our way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessings on blessings, yeah. I can see the blessings coming our way. Oh, looks good. Uh. I think I'm a very good dancer now. Eh? Yeah. Good job. Good job, man. RLC.sg slash WB2020 dance. Now, I just need to fill in my details. Wow. 
and done. No matter what the odds may bring our way, I can see the blessings coming my way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessings on blessings, yeah. I can see the blessings coming my way. Ooh. Eh, wow. It does look fun, huh? You all wanna try? Um, you can try yourself. Like, don't, as long as you're not involved. Mm -hmm. Okay. No matter what the odds may bring our way, I can see the blessings coming our way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessings on blessings, yeah. I can see the blessings coming our way. Well, I have no idea how Amos and I suddenly got involved in that dance in that video. But in any case, the dance is actually much easier than I thought it would be. And so, why not? Let's come together with our family, ourselves, and even our friends and submit it to this link by this Sunday. Be a part of the We Belong Weekend by doing this fun dance and we'll all do it together as a church family. And get excited for We Belong Weekend! Yeah, I can't wait for I can't wait to seek Jesus together with the whole church as one family. Last year's conference was really fruitful and it made me learn. Pastor Gina is watching! Oh no no, I better think of something. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, okay. I remember what I learned. Okay. So last year I remember we learned that River Life Church, we are a cell church. And together we all belong as one family in God's kingdom. That's right. And do you know what this year's church conference is about? Mm, I heard it's something about discipleship. That's absolutely right. And why not let's give Pastor Ben a call right now to hear a bit more about what this year's conference is going to be all about. So let me give him a call. Hello Pastor Ben, this is the Young Siblings calling from Mega News and we just want to ask you, what is this year We Belong Conference going to be all about? Discipleship is trusting and following Jesus and helping others to trust and follow Jesus. Jesus had a very clear approach to making disciples. People were at the heart of His approach. He practiced relational discipleship. So relationship was the foundation of his approach and he also practiced purposeful discipleship. He may have spoken to thousands, but he chose 12. And out of the 12, he related with Peter, James and John at a different, at a deeper level than the other nine. Why discipleship? Because the very last thing Jesus told his followers on earth was to go and make disciples of all nations. And the church has been trying to do that for two millennia since that. And even today, the church is trying to tackle this challenge and River Life is trying to take this seriously. Whoa, Jesus disciple 12, disciple 3, then ask us to make disciples of all nations. For all nations is a lot. You know you can forget about counting how many nations there are because there is really a lot of countries. But whatever the case, Jesus has modeled to us how and we shall learn from Him. It is a command for everyone, not just the leaders. Hey, hey guys, speaking about all these nations, do you know what day tomorrow is? Tomorrow? It's National Day! Alright everybody, take out your flags! Wave out, wave out, let me see! I know I can't see it, but never mind, just wave it anyways! That's right, it's National Day! And yeah, I know talking about Singapore, maybe... um, Let's just share, what is one thing about Singapore you love the most? Why don't you share first since you asked? Okay, sure. Um, For me, something I love about Singapore is the food. We have a wide variety of food and personally my favourite is chicken rice. Oh, what an expected answer from Joel. 
I mean, he is a foodie. Right? I guess for me, what I really like about Singapore is how there's so many different cultures in just one country and you get to interact with the different people from the different background. Are you guys curious to find out what the mega lifers love about Singapore too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mega lifers, head over to Instagram at we are mega life and participate to vote for more things you love about Singapore. Uh, yes, don't forget think about you, my brother. 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 So, what is something about Singapore you love the most? Uh, something that I love about Singapore is uh, we are able to make an impact and a difference on the things that we strongly feel about. Yeah. Wow. wow. So, what has God placed you in this country to make an impact for? Mm, I think it could be uh, some of the minority groups in Singapore, uh, lower income families, or uh, someone you know in school uh, that is currently going through some issues, or even the migrant workers. Yeah, and whatever that God has placed upon your heart, Let's take time, some time right now to just pray about it. Thanks, Thanks Amos. Amos. Uh, uh, I'm a bit committed. So. Okay. Let's pray. Uh, Father God, I just want to leave all of us up in your hands. I just pray out that um, yeah, you just come and touch our hearts and that you will um, be about our one person uh, for us to reach out to. I just pray out that you give us the bonus and the courage to uh, really step up our comfort zone to reach out to them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, I guess that's all for Mega News. Today... Mm -hmm. eh, wait, 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 wait. No, something just crossed my mind. I just forgot something. Yeah. Actually, next week, we'll be having our communion. Mm -hmm. So do come prepared with all the necessary items that you need by then. And I guess that's about it. Wait, 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 wait. I also forgot something. And that is the end of announcements today. Let us put aside our distractions and prepare for a time for pleasure. Yes. Wow, very sneaky in staining my line. <laughs> wow. Well, that was a very long mega news session. Yes. I'm very thirsty. It's time to drink yeah. up, man. Yes. And so with that, let's move on to a time of worship. Goodbye. Okay, good afternoon, Mega Lifers. I hope you're excited to worship today. Uh, I think let's just come uh, together and just settle our hearts even as we begin worship today. Um, let's just all start with a word of prayer. Father, today we come before you with, with no agenda. We just come before you unhurried. We come before you not impatient, Father. We're not expecting anything of you, but Father, all we want to do today is just bring forth our worship to you. Father, wherever we are at today, Father, I just pray that you'll bring us all uh, deeper into your presence. You rid us of all distractions, Father, and help us to just enjoy this time spent with you today. Thank you, Father, that you, that you have been such a faithful God, that you have been such a mighty Father in our lives. And even through this time of worship, Father, help us to pour out our love on you and pour our praise on you once again. In Jesus' name,
who teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand out Teach my song to rise to you When temptation comes my When I cannot set out for you Cause Jesus, you're my hope and stay So teach, so teach my never turn away from you. Let us always be walking in step with you every single day. So Father, we just want to thank you for being with us today. We thank you that you are really speaking to us and that you will continue to speak to us through the rest of the service and through the rest of the day. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Grace, for leading worship. Hi, Megalifers. Long time no see. If you all don't remember me, I am Cordelia, one of the youth staff. I'm really, really glad to see all of your faces today. Um, today, even as we gather together online for a National Day weekend, we want to remember that God has called us to this nation, a nation to belong to for such a time as this. And today, we want to hear from Zhen Xing more on this topic of what it means to contribute to our nation as Singaporeans and as Christians. So over to you, Tan Sing. Good morning, River Life Church. Happy National Day. Now, before we go on any further, I really like to encourage all of us to sign up for the We Belong conference that's happening in three weeks' time. Make it a priority to be there even though it's online. Last year was a really defining year for us as there was a collective shift in our understanding of the importance of cells. I think this year will be no different. I know that Pastor Ben and the leaders have got important things to share with us. So make sure that you sign up for it. What 
a year it has been foundation. Huh? Uh, we had to negotiate through a pandemic and then we have to have our general elections in the midst of it. Now, this G was certainly an interesting one. And we all had our own take on what's the best way to move Singapore forward. My wife and I actually had many interesting conversations and suffice to say, we have our different viewpoints on it. Anyway, I've been tasked by Pastor Ben to um, speak about how we as Christians can be a blessing to Singapore. And this is actually harder to prepare than I thought it would be. Um, obviously, we each contribute to our nation through the jobs we do. Um, some of us work as civil servants, making sure that the infrastructure in our country runs well. Some of us work in healthcare or in the law or in the education system, all of which serve an important function in our nation. Regardless of uh, what work or job you do, the work in and of itself has got intrinsic value. And when we do it well, it builds our nation and it pleases God. So it goes without saying, as Christ followers, we are to be excellent workers in the marketplace and deliver good work um, to our bosses and stakeholders. But non-Christians do this as well, right? Which then begs the question, what is our unique value proposition as Christians to our society? How does our identity as Christian uniquely bless the nation that God places us in? You know the passage that preachers often turn to is Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16, which talks about us being sought and light of the world. I think this year alone, right, uh, this passage was probably preached a few times. And for last year's National Day's message, I think Pastor Liner also used the same passage. Now, before any one of us begin to think, I, uh, I've heard this message before, and I kind of know where this is heading to, I ask that we open our heart to the Word of God as I try to offer a fresh perspective on these important verses. Now, in my study of this passage, I realized a crucial point that I have often missed out um, is how this passage is connected to the previous verses. And this forms the basic premise of my message today. I realize that the declaration that we are sought and light of this world is actually an outflow, an overflow of a life lived according to the values shown in the Beatitudes. In other words, we are sought and light to our society when we hunger and thirst after righteousness, when we are merciful, when we are peacemakers, and even when we are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Being sought and light is a byproduct of living out these characteristics of the kingdom. The Beatitudes and the call to be sought and light are intimately connected. So with that as the background, let's look at the passage and see how it speaks to us. Um, reading from Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, oh sorry, verse 1 to 16, the ESV Bible. Verse 1, Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father 
who is in heaven. The first point of today's sermon is this. The call to be sought and light begins in discipleship. The first two verses in chapter 5 sets the scene for us. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain and when he sat down, his disciples came to him and he opened his mouth and taught them saying, Here we have two groups of people, the crowds and the disciples. Matthew 4, 18 to 25 actually highlights these two groups of people as Jesus was issuing a call to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus was presenting the kingdom of heaven and he was calling people towards repentance to turn away from the ways of this world and towards the kingdom of heaven to live out the kingdom life as outlined in the Beatitudes. As we approach chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount, we need to know who Jesus is addressing. Jesus is not addressing the crowds, people who might be interested in what he is saying, but is not prepared to make a commitment to discipleship. The Beatitudes will not make sense to the crowds because they were not prepared to surrender themselves to the values of the kingdom. They were merely interested observers and therefore would not find it a blessing to mourn, to be meek, to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Instead, Jesus is addressing the disciples, people who have repented and who have made a conclusive decision to turn away from the woe and live for the kingdom of heaven. It is this group of people that Jesus is addressing. You know, today as I survey the condition of our church and of the churches in Singapore, I wonder how many of us are actually disciples of Christ and how many of us are just part of the crowd, interested to hear what Jesus has to say, but not interested to live a kingdom life. Today, as we approach this text, the question to each of us is this, are you a disciple of Christ or are you just part of the crowd? Someone who's just a church goer. You could be attending service, going to cell group or even serve in a ministry and yet not be a disciple of Christ. Attending church and being a part of church does not make you a disciple of Christ if you are not submitted to His Lordship and not submitting yourself to live out the values of the kingdom. Saying the sinner's prayer does not make you a disciple. It only initiates you into discipleship for which you have to continue to walk out throughout your life. If today we are not submitted to discipleship in our lives, then what are we doing as a church? I think the question that confronts us today is this, how many of us are truly disciples of Christ? And if the answer is, I'm not sure, then I really want to encourage us to treat our faith commitment to Jesus seriously. Discipleship is not an optional choice in our faith journey. It is foundational. Now, some of us might be wondering what a disciple of Christ looks like. And the, 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 the Beatitudes succinctly outlines the characteristic of a disciple. Obviously, we don't have the time to go through each point in depth. But what I hope to do is to whet our appetite for the Word of God so that we will take time by ourselves to study this passage. Now, this leads me to the next point. Point two. We become salt and light to the world when we live out the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As I I was immersing myself in this passage, the first Beatitude was the one that hit me the hardest. I still remember after a day of studying um, the scripture and allowing it to speak to me as I was unwinding during the evening, watching TV together with waiting. The immensity of what it means to be poor in spirit hit me so hard and I felt the presence of God strongly and the blessedness and happiness of being poor in spirit. 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? Being poor in spirit simply means recognizing our deep need for God. Blessed are those who know their need of God. This is contrasted against those who are self-sufficient, who rely on being self-adequate. This was precisely the problem of the Pharisees who depended on their self-righteousness and on their efforts to meet the requirements of the law. That was the reason why the kingdom of God does not belong to them because they were not poor in spirit. They depended on themselves, not God. The first beatitude is the foundation of all other beatitudes. If we do not get this right, we will not be able to live out the other seven beatitudes because they are just too hard. And none of us here are good enough, holy enough, strong enough to lead out the Christian life. We can't do that on our own. We all need God. And that is a blessing because we were never supposed to be self-sufficient. We're all called to recognize our poverty, our inadequacy. You know, I feel so much happiness and delight in being in a place of being dependent on God. It is such a happy place. It's such a liberating place. The first step to being sought and light to the world is not to try and make, to, it's not to try to make an impact on the world. The first step is to recognize that you can't change the world, but Christ in you and the life of Christ coming out of you will make that change in the world. You alone cannot be the salt and light of the world. Only when Christ is in you are you then the salt and light of the world. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. There's much relation between the first and third beatitude and it makes sense for us to go through this first. As a Christian, I've often come across this beatitude many times and often find myself confused as to what it means. What does being meek mean? How does being meek count as a blessing? And how can the meek be sought and light of this world? In our society, we are often encouraged to be assertive. If you want something in life, if you want to get ahead of the pack, if you want to make an impact in the world, you have to be assertive. But meekness is the opposite of self-assertiveness. Meekness does not try to change the situation purely out of one's own strength, but recognizes that there is a higher authority and submits to Him. Therefore, those who are meek realize that there is a higher power at work and recognize that it is more important to follow the leading of God than to try and make things happen themselves. You know, when I was younger, I was a lot more confident in my abilities to make an impact in the world, especially in ministry. If I were just to, if I were just to work harder, lead worship better, challenge people harder, more can be done in ministry. But over time, I realized that in many circumstances, it's not me who makes an impact, but it's ultimately God who does most of the heavy lifting. I realized that actually, I'm not so important. And I must not mistake God's working for my own effort. But that's not to say that the meek are passive. Rather, the meek are those most actively walking in step with God and following his leading. Just look at the example of Jesus. He never once asserted himself. Just look at the, uh, the, the book of John. He never once asserted himself, but was always attentive to what the Father wants him to do, and he acts accordingly. It is not those who are assertive who will be sought and light to the world. Because what comes out of the assertive is a lot of self and a lot of human agenda. Rather, it is the meek who would be sought and light to the world because what comes out from them is what the Father is doing in and through them. So we have covered two, two Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit and blessed are the meek. This forms the first collective in the list. 
Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. How can those who mourn be blessed? You know, our society has a high value for pleasure, fun and happiness. We take delight in entertainment, good food, and just simply having a good time. Our society is happy in this world. And by extension, many Christians are happy in this world. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with any of these things in and of themselves. But with this as the background, we need to listen to what Jesus is saying here. The morning that Jesus here refers to is a more fundamental kind of morning. It is not so much a morning because something sad or tragic has happened. Rather, it is a morning over the sins in our life and the evil that exists in this world. We mourn over sin because we know that living in holiness is the true blessed state and we take seriously the sin that exists in our lives. We mourn because we desire to live free of sin, but we often find it a struggle as we wrestle against our flesh. And it's those who mourn over the sin in their lives that will seek to live a holy life by the power of the Spirit. And it is they who would be comforted on Judgment Day. Contrast this to those who live their life seeking only pleasure now, with no remorse for the sin in their lives. On that final day, on that judgment day, instead of being comforted, they will realize the foolishness in their ways. Mourning is healthy because it tells us that we are not completely happy in this world and that we look forward to the kingdom of heaven that is to come. This naturally leads us to the fourth beatitude because it is only those who mourn over the sin in their lives and in this world. It is they who would thirst and hunger after righteousness. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger after righteousness for they shall be filled. What does this righteousness refer to? Now this righteousness refer both to personal righteousness and also righteousness in the society. We often call this social, in, social justice. Now, before um, we go on any further, it's important to make this comment. There are two kinds of personal righteousness, all right? Two kinds of personal righteousness. The first kind of personal righteousness is the righteousness that is credited to us when we place our faith in Jesus and His death on the cross. We call this justification, right? And it's with this righteousness that we have eternal life. This righteousness is given to us purely out of God's grace. Here we are being clothed with Jesus' righteousness. But then righteousness is not just something we put on. It's not just something that's on us. But it is something that also grows in us. This second kind of righteousness has to do with the way we live our lives right now. And in this sense, we can walk in increasing levels of righteousness as we conform our lives more and more to the desire and will of God. We do this by offering ourselves to God as instruments of righteousness where we live rightly before God. And as we do that, our lives will consequently become sought and light to the world. But living a righteous life might not be a cool thing in the eyes of the world. But it is the biblical way to be salt and light. You know, even as I'm saying all this, I think it's important for us to know that being salt and light might not always be seen by the wider society as something good. There are times when the world and our society do not want us to be salt and light they want us to be darkness and to lose our saltiness so that they can continue to live in moral decay and the pleasures that come with it. Us being sought and liked might not always be welcome. That is also why we might be persecuted for righteousness sake. Blessed are the persecuted. But that does not mean that we are weird people who live in such a way that brings about ridicule. 
we must not live, um, we must live our life in this world wisely and rightly and we must continue to involve ourselves in the world. But we have to live this, we have to live distinct lives where our identity is first and foremost a disciple of Christ before we are citizens of this world. We need to know that we are part of the kingdom of God while living our lives in the kingdom of this world. And the, pri- the byproduct of living, and if the byproduct of living such a life is persecution, then we must be ready to embrace it and see it as a sign that we are in the right direction. So let's take stock of where we are at so far. The first two Beatitudes we went through um, can be summed up as knowing our need and dependence of God, while the next two Beatitudes can be summed up as mourning over the sins in our life and the world and therefore desiring after righteousness to reign. In the remaining time, we will focus on the call to be merciful. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. I must admit that this is an area where I have so much more to learn and I'm teaching this beatitude not from a position of having a lift this out but simply from a position of teaching what the Bible says. I think in showing mercy, there is first a call to enter into the miseries and difficulties of our neighbours. Being merciful is fundamentally relational not transactional. We need to feel the pain and mourn with them in their difficulties. But obviously, we need to go beyond just empathising with them. We have to show our love in concrete ways, whether that is through finances or by participating in initiatives to visit the poor and provide practical support. I know River Life is involved in a few projects that reaches out to the less fortunate. Um, Pastor Joachim will be sharing more about this in the coming weeks and I want to encourage all of us to step out and be a part of this. Now, um, when you do this, you probably won't bring about much drastic change to the life of these people immediately. And many of their problems and difficulties are much deeper than any one-time solution. In fact, you can be journeying um, with them for many years And any breakthrough you see in their lives might not be as much as you hope for. Even still, love and minister to them. And in showing love and mercy to our neighbours, we become salt and light of our society. I think it's important to emphasise here that the call is first and foremost to be faithful, to love our neighbours and extend mercy to them not so much to solve um, problems um, on a systemic or structural level as important, as crucial as it might be. I think this is important because it eliminates any excuse on our part that says, what I do does not matter what, since the problem will still exist after um, what I have done. The call to be sought and light is first a call to show love and mercy even as we learn to work with God and trust in Him for the bigger issues in our society. This weekend is the National Day weekend and the question we ask ourselves at the beginning of this message is this, as Christians, what is our unique value proposition to our society? More than the work we do, um, or the civic responsibilities we fulfil. I believe that there is a unique call on us as Christians to be sought and light. That's how we contribute to um, our nation. And in the passage we studied, we learned that being sought and light starts with being a disciple first. And as we live out the values outlined in the Beatitudes, our lives become sought and light to the world around us. Verse 16 tells us that the result of this is that those around us will see the lives that we live and the good works that we do and that they would then give glory to our Father who is in heaven. The question to you and I today is this. Are you a disciple of Christ or are you just a churchgoer? 
Are you allowing Christ to transform your life such that you live out the Beatitudes? Or have you lost your saltiness and are very much part of this world? My prayer is that we will all be found to be disciples of Christ who live out the Beatitudes as salt and light to our nation. This would be our unique contribution to Singapore. Let's pray. Lord, I pray um, this day, Lord, that you would confront our hearts, that if any one of us here have been playing church, just going to church um, through a routine, I pray you will confront our hearts, whether we are just simply part of the crowd, interested to listen to what Jesus has to say, but not interested to submit to His Lordship, or are we disciples of Christ, conforming our lives to the values as shown in the Beatitudes? I pray that you will confront our hearts. Lord, that as we slowly move in, um, uh, conform our lives in discipleship, Lord, that our lives will begin to live out the values of the Beatitude. And out of that, Lord, we would, uh, good works be, will begin to come out of our lives. And I pray you will use us as a church family, as River Life Church, to be salt and light to pastorists and to the many neighbourhoods in our, in our society and so that we as River Life Church can be a blessing to Singapore. And so I commit every life, myself and um, every reliever into your hands. And may you use us to be salt and light to our nation. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Tun Zing, for that word. What does it mean for us to live as salt and light? in this nation with our friends and with our family it starts from living out the Beatitudes so Megalifers how desperate are you how much do you recognize that I truly need God so even as we discover and unpack that a bit more in ourselves today may all of you have a great time discussing and realizing to a deeper measure who God is to me in my life and how present God is in our life with that let me pronounce the benediction over you may the love of the Father the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Have a great sale and happy holidays.